Hey, what's up, guys? Welcome to another episode of Power Platform TV. So in the previous episode, we looked at using uh, Power Automate, and we set up a webhook in D365, and the D365 uh, webhook sent out a uh, to our subscription in uh, Power Automate, and the, the, the flow ran, and we sent an email with the body of the request in it, right? So uh, that was our first look at using webhooks, and uh, the, so it's pretty useful functionality. And in this video, what we'll do is we'll take a look at uh, using Azure Functions instead of Power Automate, right? So Azure Functions are a bit more of a programmatic way of doing things. So, you know, if you're a developer and you want to be writing some code and you want to take advantage of Azure Functions, then we can set up an Azure Function and subs have that be the subscriber to our webhook in D365. So when events happen in D365, they'll send that uh, event information over to our subscribing uh, Azure function, and then we can go ahead and do what we want with it, right? So let's go ahead and create a function app and see how this works. So I'm in uh, portal.azure.com, and I'm gonna go ahead here and click on a uh, function app, right? And it's gonna take me over here, and you can see I actually have a couple of function apps that were created previously. And what I will do is click create here. We'll create a new one so we can go through the process of creating one. And here we have the resource group. I'm just gonna provide a resource group here and the function app name. So I'm gonna do uh, D365 web hook test. And then the runtime stack here, I'm gonna use .NET version six and the region is fine. Okay. And it looks like actually the name I provided was not, was already, is already taken. Let's just try it with the number one on the end. And there we go. Okay. So let's go and review and create this. And this all looks good to us. And I'm just going to go and click create. Okay. So that might take a couple of minutes to be uh, created, but once it's created, you'll see something like this. So we, then we can go ahead and create a function or go to the resource. Let's just go ahead and create a function. And so this will be the function that we will be uh, called, that will be called from our webhook in D365, okay? So the development environment, we have a choice here for what we can use. I'm just gonna leave this as develop in the portal, okay? Um, then the templates here, we have these various different templates and this one here, this first one, a function that will be run whenever it receives an HTTP request, responding based on data, in the body or query string. So that's very similar to the uh, one that we used in Power Automate and uh, basically the same thing, right? So we're gonna click on this one and then it says here it needs some more information. We uh, have the function name here and then we have the authorization level, okay? Uh, so I'm gonna keep those as the same. We'll just call it HTTP trigger one. I'm gonna go ahead and click create here. And so that takes us over here, and then we want to basically go over to code plus test, and then we'll be able to see our code and we can test this function. So if we look at this here, uh, it provides us with a basic set of code here. It basically says uh, for this function, when it's run, we're gonna just log the information, uh, sorry, log information here, and we'll just print this out to the logs uh, that it processed our request. And then we're going to take in this uh, name attribute and basically we'll print that out here if we get that, if it's being passed in, okay? Um, and we will basically take in the request body and uh, deserialize it and then we can use it, okay? So very simple. And then up the top here, we have this test slash run. So we can actually test this out within the portal and then this is the uh, the function URL. So that's the URL that we can actually provide to our uh, D365 webhook, okay? So let's go ahead and click test and run. We'll just take a look at this. And we have the HTTP method here. We'll keep that as post. Uh, the master key, that's fine. We can uh, add query or headers uh, and then the body here, right? So if you leave this how it is, and you can see here we're just passing the name Azure here. Uh, if I click run, it's going to connect to the service, right? So it says connected, and here we get a 200 back, right? 
Um, if you just click it a second time, we'll get some input actually appearing here into the logs. And you can see here in the blue, it says uh, executing function. And then we have here the this line here, right? C sharp uh, HTTP trigger function process to request. So that's this line 10 up here. Okay, so this is logging it here, right? And then we have the uh, executed uh, trigger function here. And that's what we get back, okay? And we can see here what was returned is the uh, response message here where it basically says that this was triggered and then it says hello and then the name we provided. And then here we have the response content and it says, uh, hello Azure, this HTTP triggered function executed successfully, right? So let's go and grab the function URL and we can just go and grab this here like this, copy to clipboard. And now we're going to go back over to the plugin registration tool and we'll add this as a webhook. All right, so here we are in the plugin registration tool. And this is the one that we created in the previous video uh, where we were, uh, where we created the webhook on the creator for the contact. What I'm just going to do is just disable this step so we don't get this running twice. Um, and then we'll be basically setting up a similar step. Okay, so I'm going to go and uh, register a new webhook. And then the name of the webhook, we'll call this uh, create contact webhook uh, with Azure function. And then the endpoint, I'm going to paste in the endpoint here uh, from our clipboard from our Azure function. And you can see here, it's like the previous video where there's some parameters being passed, right? So we're going to copy those parameters out and I'm going to paste those into a notepad and then we can basically just paste these in. So we, we, it's really just one parameter. So you, you could see here we have code and then we have this big line of code, right? So I'm just going to copy this, create a new key and make it like code like this and control V, paste that in. Okay. Um, and then I'm going to change this and then we should be good. Now I'm going to click save and we are all set, right? And if I just double click on this, just double check that, make sure that the uh, keys and value is saved because for some reason, sometimes it doesn't save properly, all right? If it doesn't save properly, you'll run into errors. So now let's go and add a new step and it's going to be create and we're going to do this on the contact and we'll just keep this as a post operation synchronous just for this test, okay? So that all looks good. I'm going to register a new step here. Now we can go into D365 and try this out. Okay. Okay. So here I am in D365 and you can see here on the left, I have the uh, new contact that I'm going to create. And then on the right, I have the uh, Azure function that is waiting for receiving a, a request. So let's go ahead and just create a new contact. And so when I click on save, we'll see on the right, we'll see the information uh, coming down here. So hopefully what's happening is on saving the contact, it will go into the, where we've configured in the plugin registration tool, the webhook, and the webhook will say, okay, uh, you've subscribed to this create contact event. Now I'm going to hit the URL that you provided and the URL was the Azure function, okay? So let's go ahead and click save and keep an eye on the right. And we see here that the Azure function was triggered and it ran successfully, right? So, so there, there we have it. It's actually uh, receiving the input and uh, displaying it into the logs here, right? Now, one thing it's not doing is it's not actually displaying what it's being received uh, as as a as part of the request body in from D three sixty five, right? So, what we would hope is, as with the Power Automate example we're getting information from D365 that's contextual, okay? Um, so we we know that the, the contact Bob Smith was created and we would like to know more about that when we call the, the webhook, right? So that we can go ahead and do things with that information. So let's just change this a little bit here and we can actually get some output. So instead of the name here, what I'm going to change this to is uh, data.2 string okay so data is the uh is what we get here that is uh, the deserialized json object 
and I'm just going to convert that to a string and then I'm going to uh, print that out here as well. Okay, so data dot to string like so. And let's just log this uh, response message out to the uh, console here as well. So I'm going to do a log dot log information and then we'll do the response message here that we have uh, created. Okay, so let's go and do that and click save. And now let's go and create a new contact and we will click save and let's just watch on the right hand side. And you can see here we get this uh, big block of uh, text. If I just scroll down a little bit and this is our JSON that's coming in from D365, right? So now we can use this. This is going to have contextual information about the uh, customer that was created. You can see here the last name value is Smith2. Um, so yeah, basically we're getting back that information now from D365 and we can do things with it. And I want to show you guys how you can call the uh, request uh, HTTP applications that we set up, the endpoints that we set up uh, directly from C Sharp. So, you know, you may run into various situations where you have some uh, code uh, that's C Sharp code uh, in a particular uh, context, and then you want to be calling out to the HTTP request that we set up in order to um, in order to run that code and receive some feedback. Okay, so we'll go through how to do this, uh, do that in this video. So, what I have here is I have Visual Studio set up, and I have some code here, and I'm going to show you guys where this code comes from. So if you head out to my blog here, uh, you'll see uh, this is the URL. I'll put this in the uh, links below. But basically, this is a post that I wrote that uh, where you can, where, where I go through how to call uh, get async, post async, and send async in C sharp. Okay. And if I scroll down here, uh, this is uh, this code here is where I call the uh, the post async. Okay. So basically, if you copy this, uh, well, there's two parts to this. So this is basically the function that I've created here, an async function that uses the HTTP client and does a post async, right? And then over here, I have uh, some code that runs it that basically sends through a URL and a payload and then basically uh, uh, invokes that function and then uh, we get back the results, right? So Let's go ahead and, and test this out. So back over here in Visual Studio, uh, this is exactly the same code. And what we need here is a URI. And so let's first do the example of a uh, Azure function, okay? So here's our Azure function. And basically I am going to uh, get the function URL and just copy that. Copy, and then let's go back over to Visual Studio. And I'm just going to paste that in here and the payload here. I'm just going to do this. So I'm going to pass in a payload with the name here. And instead of Azure, I'm just going to say uh, from console app. All right, let's go ahead and run this. And then we get an OK back here. And let's go and take a look at what we see on the other side. And we see here that we get the uh, the the feedback from the um, console app, and there we there we have it. So we're hitting the 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 uh, Azure function directly from C Sharp here. So that's cool. So this opens up some some capabilities, right? And then let's go ahead and try to hit the Power Automate flow as well. So let's go ahead and grab this URL, paste paste this in here, and let's just remove the payload from this one. No payload. Okay, let's go ahead and, okay, so now let's go ahead and run this. And we get an accepted back. And then let's just go ahead and take a look at what this looks like. And actually, if I go into my email here, you can see that the email was actually triggered. And we can see here that it says HTTP request received. So we did actually get this to, to run successfully. And if I go back to the uh, home here, I can see that I did get a success here 24 seconds ago, right? So, so that's it, our flow, our Power Automate flow ran uh, it, as it was invoked through C Sharp. 
So just some more pieces to the puzzle here. You may find this useful. Uh, there's so many different ways where you can use these HTTP requests, where you can use webhooks, where you can use Power Automate, where you can use Azure Functions. So hopefully this is a little piece to the puzzle. Hope you guys enjoyed. So that's it guys. If you like this video, don't forget to hit the like button, subscribe to my YouTube channel, and of course, check out my blog at carldesouza.com. Thank you.